Hey YouTube, Jeremy the One Wildcrafter here and today this is a quick video about some homestead security um, based on this product here, a Reolink security camera. So this one in particular is a Wi-Fi model. It'll connect to a home Wi-Fi network and then I can log in on a handheld device, a smartphone. Um, it is also motion activated. So what that means is wherever I put it, um, it's going to take video anytime something goes by. That could be an animal, such as outside of my chicken coop. Um, I could have it inside of the chicken coop or inside of a barn, and I could check on my phone from my phone if it's within Wi-Fi distance, uh, have a little peek around, or if there's something in the yard, I can kind of scan outside. Um, I also thought this would be handy uh, outside of the door in the case of small children um or older adults coming or leaving the house and you want to know you know maybe if they're prone to wandering what they were wearing when they left if they had shoes on those kinds of things um also for deliveries if you're just wondering who comes to your house when you're not there uh checking to see who's in your driveway before you answer the door all those kinds of things that you might worry about um this could be a solution for you so we're going to open this up have a little look inside and uh, i'm going to set it up this one here is a solar uh, powered camera, so it doesn't have to be plugged into a power supply. Um, one issue for me is the temperature rating. So this one's rated from minus 10 degrees Celsius to plus 55 degrees Celsius. Right now in the middle of winter, well today it's sitting at minus 20 degrees Celsius. So I think that that would really impede the functioning of this camera if I set it up outside. But if I were to set it up inside the chicken coop, which for example only goes down to about minus five degrees on the coldest days, it would work well in there. Or if I wanted to um, have it inside of like a porch entryway where the temperature is a little bit warmer than the outdoors, or even in a, on the inside of a window facing outdoors where it can scan um, and pick up movement out there. So lots of different options. Um, I'm gonna, try this out setting it up outside um, and the reason I was attracted to this particular model is that it will connect to the home Wi-Fi network and um, it will store video on a micro SD card or an SD card I'm not quite sure about that but I can always then just run to the camera grab the card out of it and do a quick download and see um, what's been stored that I might not have actively been looking at you can get other models that uh, will connect with a SIM card and then they will send you uh, push alerts um, and they have other features where you can connect to them and you can have voice act, voice uh, capabilities. So for example, where you have, um, like at my friend's vineyard, um, you could have one at the main gate and then people who come would trigger it. You would get a push. You'd be like, oh, there's so-and-so's at the gate. You can voice through your phone, through the camera to them and they can reply to you. Um, and you can kind of work out a plan. Um, so lots of different applications. Let's set it up. Step number one, of course, is to read the quick start guide. Make sure that um, we get all this put together properly. Um, one of the things I wanted to check was the length of this solar panel cable. I think it um, actually is 12 feet long. So your panel doesn't have to be right beside your camera. You can have your camera in one spot and your panel uh, a certain distance away. So it looks like we've got all the required parts. We just have to get it all put together. So the first thing we need to do is to get a base charge on the camera. Um, we are going to do that uh, either by using a wall adapter and plugging it right in with the USB uh, or you can charge it directly from the panel which is how it will be charging for its whole service life anyway so let's um, let's just set it up and put it out in the sun We've got a beautiful sunny day today and uh, perfect opportunity to put this panel to use the uh, panel has a mounting bracket am i doing this right let's see here no i'm not that's a tightener so first 
you have to put this on hmm something that I don't understand about this it's adjustable I just have to figure out how to adjust it that's why you're supposed to read the instructions first otherwise you just end up messing around I'm sure this is not how you're supposed to put that on but that's how I'm gonna get it started so you can hang this uh, underneath your soffit and fascia you can put it on the sidewall got lots of different mounting options so on the camera itself um, there's a spot to mount the antenna for your signal got a little bit of movement on that antenna and then we've got the plug-in for your solar panel and the nice thing here is it's got a rubber gasket to help make a weather tight seal it says that if you have a green led light that's a fully charged camera so that's kind of handy i'm already fully charged right off the start um, so it's pretty much ready to mount i don't have to pre-charge it so one nice thing about this camera is that you can install it um, against a wall with the bracket. You can also take this piece out and install it directly to a ceiling. If you're installing it indoors, it has um, the drywall inserts for the screws already set, which is handy. And if you want to install it on a tree, like a game camera, it comes with a strap and so you can attach it to a tree. Um, I'm going to install this one under some soffit and fascia so we are going to mount it uh, to the wall underneath where it's going to be out of the rain and then we're going to put this solar panel where it's going to be in the sunlight um, but not have snow falling it in the, on it in the winter. So as per the instructions I want to hang it about two to three meters off the ground so anywhere from my height to a meter higher um, I think this location is going to be okay because it can face towards the driveway where it might not be okay as it also is going to tend to face towards the sun and so there might be some glare um, now the nice thing is none of this is hardwired so if uh, we don't like how it's working we just switch it up now my uh, sister is using the cordless driver in the chicken coop to fix nest boxes and things so I'm on old hamburger power here if you're uh, putting these into hardwood paneling probably want to pre-drill them and I'm putting these into softwood and I think they're gonna be okay without being pre-drilled Gosh, every time I have to use a manual screwdriver, I think about all the drywall my dad and I did back in the days before cordless drivers were popular. And you wonder how you ever did it. My arms are sore just doing two. I'm ready to quit. This will be a good location it's also on the side of the house that's only going to catch um, sun on the afternoons or in the afternoons I think to twist this on I'm gonna to have to take the antenna off So 
just going to put it on fairly tight. Then I'm going to turn. Oh, the camera's got a maximum. Okay, I can point towards the door or towards the steps, towards the camera, so that should work. Put this antenna back in. Good. Now, our panel to catch the sun probably can just go somewhere around here or maybe if I can figure out how to oh there we go once you loosen it you can adjust it all it's on a 360 degrees rotation here now can I set it Right like, right like that. So it's not in the way of the camera, but it's gonna catch all of that Western sun. That's gonna work. Screwdriver, screws. Uh oh. So this is a very simple setup. This is a do-it-yourself for sure. No need to hire somebody to do this for you. And the nice thing is if you don't like how it's working out, very easy to move it or change up the application. Like I said, if you want to put it at a gate, you want to put it inside your house, you could use it as a baby monitor. You could use it as a chicken coop monitor, you could use it as a dog kennel monitor, you could use it as a cottage monitor if you bought the model with the uh, that uses a SIM card and you get a data plan, you could have it uh, at the cottage or your second property, your hunt camp. Um, so lots of options. The uh, camera is a high def camera, so that's kind of nice get high definition photos you should be able to recognize individuals or little weasels crawling around or whatever it is you're trying to scope out okay once that's uh, screwed into place we're just going to let out enough cable to plug in our connection and our little waterproof gasket. We've got an orange light, which means there's power going from the panel to the camera. So, so far so good. Now we just have to read the instructions and figure out how to connect to it on a device. It's full winter here now. Zoomed in. They love to peck at the snow, so they get a bowl of snow. This is the rooster that my kids raised, but he turned out to be kind of aggressive, so he's over in the side area here with that ice free chicken nipple waterer working pretty good. No ice in that one, unlike, unlike these ones that ice up. Got a dust bath. My sister's been working on all these nice laying boxes. My leggy. Aww. Look at all you guys. Please run RioLink app. Add the camera and set it up. Welcome to RioLink. Connection to the router succeeded. Welcome to RioLink. So with the client installed, I'm now able to uh, connect to a live feed on the camera. I can adjust the field of view. 
have options. So down here I can set off an alarm. I'm on the one to move the camera. Uh, I can start talking to people outside, do some recordings, and take snapshots. So this is on the home computer. So you need to have the camera that's in your hand. Over Wi-Fi. No, the one on the porch. And then I can connect also with the app on a smartphone. So we'll do a little bit of playing around with it yet. So now in the settings, I can adjust the display, um, the quality of the video, the detection sensitivity. I uh, get readouts about the battery. Um, there's all these different settings that you can work through. Um, and that's what I'm going to do, but so far so good. And now that I've got the camera all set up, I can connect it to multiple devices. So for example, on my cell phone, I'm able to get a live feed, even though I'm not at the house on that Wi-Fi network, as long as I'm anywhere with a data plan, I can connect and I can uh, look through the camera. Not only that, um, I can pan the camera around, I can speak through the camera, I can set off the alarm uh, and engage other features. So I was able to set it up on my parents' desktop so they can also use it from inside their house. And I set it up on my smartphone so I can use it from anywhere. So pretty handy feature. I can, uh, you know, any, any of us can use that to screen people who are coming to the house or see what animals are coming in the night. If you had it set up in a different location outside of your barn uh, on another property at a hunt camp or whatever, I'm sure you can imagine all the different ways that this could be useful. Um, there are probably even more features that I haven't caught on to yet. And uh, many other models of camera that uh, have additional features. So, you know, maybe that's something that suits you. Um, I don't know if I consider it a security feature on the homestead, but definitely a peace of mind feature. And, uh, and, and we're all happy to have it and have it set up. So uh, thank you to Reolink for sending that. Um, most of the setup went pretty smooth. I had to look up a few things that weren't in the user manual, but overall it was a, a pretty painless experience. And, um, and I did what they told me not to do, which is I set it up outdoors, even though it's only rated to minus 10 degrees Celsius and it's been colder than that here and have not had any trouble keeping the battery charged just off the solar panel or accessing the camera, even when it's colder than minus 10 degrees Celsius. So, uh, there's a bonus for that camera there too.